Hey guys, good morning. Welcome back to our Bible study in the book of Romans. This is going to be really short this morning. Uh, we didn't have our Bible study last night, our expound Saturday night study, uh, just because people were traveling other things. So we kind of didn't. And, and we're heading into a section of scripture, Romans 8, 29, 8, 30, which is really where we should be this morning in our online study. But I didn't want to, I guess, virtually teach that until we had actually done it in person because i think there'll be a lot of questions there this scripture is one that's literally caused division in the church and the very second i use the word division that's when you've got to know that obviously man is the one that's creating the division god never god adds god subtracts god multiplies god does not divide and so when we see this next set of scripture we kind of forget some things we forget to look at the context of the entire chapter. We forget to look and remind ourselves that God's not going to do anything that's against the very character of God. And so all those things are important as we go into this section of Scripture. So what I do want to do today, I didn't want to leave you nothing, because I knew a few of you are traveling and everything's things today, and this is your Sunday morning because of the coronavirus, this has been your Sunday morning service, literally sitting out here in the yard with me. So I want to take just a quick minute, and I want to go back, and I want to look at something, and just speak to you for a moment, and I think this will add some value to your day, to my day, It's to lift you through this week. Go to Romans 8, 28. It's where we closed last week, but let's let's just talk about and expound that verse a little bit more. I mean, obviously, you could go for days on this verse it's so powerful if you're with me say amen <laughs> all right good deal and we know that all things work together for good to those who love god to those who are called according to his purpose father god we ask lord that you would be with us today in our bible study be with us in our homes or cars wherever it is that we hear your word god that you lift us you protect us god and you allow us to hear what it is you would say god take me out of the way and help me to bring your message this morning lord in jesus name we pray amen amen so as we kind of get into this this morning, we got into it last week, but I'm going to tell you what kind of it was yesterday. I was really looking on this so much. And uh, there's something, there's a pastor named Chuck Smith who I, he's passed away, but I, I deeply love Chuck Smith's teaching. I love the spirit that he had, uh, the spirit that still lives. And one of the things he always said is like one of his quotes or catchphrases, never give up the things you know for the things you don't know. You follow that? Never give up the things you know or never trade. Never trade the things you know for the things you don't know. We live in a time more than ever where we get, and especially right now, it's perfect. We get so unbelievably scared. We get out of our minds. God tells us things. God makes us promises. And it's like at the very first opportunity, we jump. It's like we're all on the Bible bus. We're driving and we're happy on the Bible bus. And with that first bump in the road, I'm jumping off the Bible bus. I'm out of here. I've been... Uh, looking at Pilgrim's Progress lately. It was a book, uh, a book. And it's interesting, this story of Pilgrim and Pilgrim's, Pro and Pilgrim's Progress. And as Pilgrim travels his road, he is so easily diverted. He so easily gets off the path. And the thing is, it's this perfect example of us as Christians, how easily we get off. We are so quick that to just absolutely forget it's the most amazing thing it's i've been around long enough now since salvation that i've seen so many people it's like the very first thing this very first hiccup that comes to them the first thing they do is leave the church i get a little stress at home the first thing i'm gonna do is i'm out of the church 
I'm stopping coming to church. It's like, God, you didn't give me exactly what I wanted from you, so God, I'm done. And we know that all things work together for good to those who love God. It's kind of funny. We never question God about the good things. We never question God about the blessings that we get. We never look at God and say, God, why did you give me this new job where I'm making more money? <laughs> we don't do that one. Yet at the same time, if we prayed for the new job and didn't get it, we're pretty quick to say, well, God, you obviously are either not there or you don't love me because I didn't get exactly what I want. You remember we just read it the other day about how likewise the Spirit also helps in our weakness? Did you ever think you didn't need the new job because your perhaps new boss might lead you into a lifestyle that might compromise your Christian ethics? Also, I want you to look at this. When he says this in here, he says, all things together for good to those who love God. Now notice this verse does not imply, this verse is totally non-existent, and this promise, this promise doesn't hold to someone who doesn't love God. This is a verse for the believer, not the unbeliever, not the make-believer, but this is a verse for the person who truly loves God. And even in that same line, I do understand, I know how quickly it is to look and question God. And that's why we said it a second ago, is like, you know, we don't question God for the good things. But it is important, that's why you should pray daily. It's, it's why you should sit down at your meals and say grace before your meals. Well, that's just, that's kind of like old fashioned, Jason, this, <laughs> you know, just saying grace before the meal. What, there's something wrong with taking a moment every day to just remind God that you're thankful for the food that's on your plate? Thank God for just looking out for your life. A lot of times we forget to be thankful, so it's nice to have this something in our life every day that drives us back to God to remember to say thank you for everything that he's done. So when you look at this and you're like, ah, I'm not, I'm not, I don't know about this saying great. I promise you, God loves your communication. God wants to hear from you today. Think about that. It's kind of funny. Peter said, we only know the things that are near. We're so short-sighted. We forget God sees this bigger picture. We forget one of the things that we're learning in Romans right now is God's got a plan. And the most important thing is the plan. We've got this little plan for this little piece of my our lives, this little I've got this plan for my little patch of ground. I've got this plan for my little circle of people. God's got a plan for a nation. For God, what he sees one day. Remember, what were we told? What were we just told in Romans chapter 8, verse 17? And if children, then heirs, heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ, if indeed we suffer with him. Heirs of God, joint heirs with Christ. Where is Christ? He's at the right hand of God. And we're being promised a part of that kingdom. God sees a kingdom. God sees a throne, and he sees every single face. He's always seen. That's what we're going to learn. He's always seen every face that will be around that throne and there are no accidents there is but god has got a plan and that plan and i don't like to say what i'm going to say but that's here's the truth but god's plan is bigger than what your happiness is this week you tell me where i'm promised to be happy wealthy 
You promise where I'm told I'll be wealthy and healthy. We're promised that God has a plan. We're promised that nothing can take you out of his hand. We said that earlier, you know, we know all things. There's certain things that you, as believer, as Christian, if you've come to God, that you've got to know, one of which is the the plan is what God sees the throne and you play a part and you play a part in not just your own presence at that throne, if you're a child of God, but you play a part in the lives of others and God's plan to get them to the throne. When you start looking at the bigger picture, it makes the little piece what does that song says in my own little world it hardly ever rains? This own little world population me. We get this such a small, narrow picture that we lose track when he says all things work together for good, and we talked about it last week. It does not mean for a second necessarily that it's the good you're going to see right now. There's things that are going to work through your life that until you are at the throne of God, where for God it's already a completed work. He speaks of the things that come as if they are, even though there aren't <laughs> right now. God sees the things that are to be as they are, even though they aren't. Because for God, it's already a finished work. For you, it's going to be different. For you, it's going to be one day in heaven when you may finally look and be like that horrible trial all this muck that I went through that just seemed so exhausting that I couldn't figure out. And one day when you're standing around the throne, you're going to look and all of a sudden, now you're going to get it. God, this is... <laughs> oh, you, you guy, you, oh, that was good. I didn't see it coming, Lord, but you had a plan. It's going to be, you may not see the good in this life. Brother Jason, I don't like this preaching. Okay, you don't have to. It's YouTube. You can click over to Joel Olstein. He'll tell you everything's going to be okay. I'm going to tell you everything's going to be okay, but it may not happen on this piece of dirt. But God's got better things to come. Notice how what he says, this focus is on, you know, what we know Paul puts a lot of effort into always talking about the things that we know. This is not the first time he's talked about this. He said things like, do you not know? We know. And every time he says it, it means these are things you should understand. In Romans chapter 2, he tells us, do you not know that God's judgment is just? He says, do you not understand that there is judgment coming and that judgment is just? And God will judge every single person. In Romans chapter 3, he asked, Do you not know that we are all guilty? That's why when we say the ABCs of coming to Christ, the ABCs of saying, the, the getting saved, the first thing is you, you've got to admit that you're a sinner first. You see, in Romans chapter 3, verse 19, he's already told us that we're guilty. It's not hard for us to realize when you can really get truthful. And that's what drove me to literally trying to kill myself. I knew I was guilty. But I couldn't handle the guilt and I couldn't handle the burden. And I never realized I wasn't supposed to. You've got to admit you're a sinner. You've got to admit that you're guilty. You believe that Jesus died for you. And I'll still say that you've got to confess your sins to him. There comes this honesty, this part, you'll never have a victorious life till you can finally sit here and say to God, all these mistakes are on me. God, I've made a mess out of things. And God, I need you to help. In Romans chapter 6, verse 9, he told us, Do we not know that Christ has been raised from the dead? 
And I want you to focus on that, believer. Christ is raised from the dead. We live in a time where people would try and um, fairy tale up what the Bible says. The thing is, Jesus was a real man, or the real Son of God, who walked on a real earth, who really healed people, who went to a real cross on a real hill, was beaten relentlessly, who really had a sword placed into his side, who really died in this earthly body, was wrapped in real grave cloths, put in a real tomb with a real stone wrapped around it, and who three days later was really risen. And that's what Paul is reminding you. You see, there are those who would try and take away from this now. Even, okay, so Jesus was real. We'll concede to that. But, you know, his disciples came and stole him away. Yes, his disciples who ran away screaming from a garden when the soldiers come to take him now have rallied themselves together and now they've come back and they've whooped the soldiers guarding the tomb and have stolen his body and not only stolen it but managed to make it disappear beyond the records of the CSI of that day. All right, so come on. If we're talking fairy tales, talk about one that's just absolutely ludicrous. Uh, if you read anything about his guys after Jesus was crucified, they were defeated themselves. It wasn't even they who came back to the tomb. It was some ladies. It was some ladies that actually came back to the tomb and there found the stone rolled away. I'm sure they were pretty buff taking creatine maybe and they were just like, Jesus really rose from the grave. Today, I want you to focus on the things you know. In the midst of this world, of all the things we don't know going on in this world, of all the junk, people will come into your lives and they will lie to you and try and steer you away from the gospel. Oh, you know this a little bit. Well, here, here's what it really says. Do not trade, I'll say Pastor Chuck's line again, do not trade what you know for what you don't know. We know that Jesus Christ really rose from a tomb, that he really came here. We know that you were really loved so much that God was willing to give his only son for you. We really know, as it says in Deuteronomy, and it says Paul, maybe Paul, the writer of Hebrews, says in 13.5, we know that God has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. You know, if there's no other scripture you have today, you hold to that. I know that God will never leave me nor forsake me. Paul is building up to a outlaw Josie Wells type of moment here. <laughs> Sorry, you know I love my movies, and Josie Wells, that is my favorite of all time. But there's a scene at the end of the movie where the outlaw Josie Wells goes, when things get bad, and it looks like you're not going to make it. That's when you got to get mean. I mean, plum, mad dog, mean. Because if you lose your head and you give up, then you neither live nor win. That's just the way it is. Okay, let's face it. God does such a better job than Josie Wells. But God is trying to, in this scripture, remember what we've just talked about. There's going to be suffering that comes in this world. And God is giving you, if we were standing in person today, I would already be running right now because this scripture, I may go take a lap through the yard real quick. Because this scripture, we know all things work together to the good for those who love God. Flip to verse 38. We're going to do it next week, but I want you to look at it because this is huge. 
You need to have comfort today. There are things you need to know today. Look at what he says, for I am persuaded, in verse 38, for I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor any, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature, cre nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. I promise you when I read this next week, I'll be standing on a picnic table. Because you are being made a promise, child of God, that he's never going to let go of you. Woo! <laughs> yeah, that's good. Just woke up the whole family. It happens. Check the fear at the door. If you belong to God, you are a child of God and thus an heir of God. You hold to these things you know this week. No matter what the news is showing you, no matter what your friends are telling you, God loves you and He has a place for you. Don't you quit serving God this week, but you go and you say, Oh, though the world slays me, God, I'm going to serve you. Oh, Lord, I'm going to serve you. You remember what He's done for you. I'll bring it one step further. A lot of us have forgotten that shape that we were in when we first came to Christ. There's a reason why I say you should write down your testimony. Because you have a tendency to kind of forget it, or maybe you shade it where it was not as bad, or eh, whatever. You need to write down your testimony. Because sometimes I think we don't even know what God brought us out of. Brother, sister, I'm telling you, I remember what God brought me out of. I can remember sitting there coming off of the Klonopin and everything else clawing at my chest. I can remember holding a pistol thinking, this is it. I know what God brought me from. There's not a day goes by that I can sit here and say, do we not know? You know, it's interesting we say this and there's... God knows everything. And it's interesting this morning as I was going through and it's like, I was looking at Strong's Concordance on every place the words we know are mentioned. Things we know throughout the entire Bible. By the way, that's the kind of things that I do. I look for every case because it's like, you know, we could preach a whole sermon series on the things God wants you to know. But you know, it's interesting. God knows everything. But I only saw one example going through Strong's this morning of when God said, I don't know. Wait a minute. But God knows everything. Right. But there is a place where he says, I don't know. And then some said to him, Lord, are there few who will be saved? Luke chapter 13, verse 22. And he said to them, Strive to enter through the narrow gate. For many, I say to you, will seek to enter and will not be able. For once the master of the house has risen up and shut the door, and you begin to stand outside and knock at the door, saying, Lord, Lord, open for us. And he will answer and say to you, I do not know you, where you are from. Then you will begin to say, We ate and drank in your presence, and you taught in, and you taught in our streets. Lord, I came to church every Sunday. I taught Sunday school class. I did all these things. I gave 10% exactly. You can answer my accountant. But he will say, I tell you, I do not know you where you are from depart from me all you workers of iniquity i think the roosters crowed three times i think that means it's probably time to wrap this up 
if you watch this video and you don't feel like you have this certainty, it's because you may hear the words, I do not know you. I pray for each and every person out there today. I pray for those of you who love God. That you hold to the truth. That you hold to what you know. You hold to the promises that God has made you. You hold to the fact that He will never leave you. Never forsake you. That He's got a plan for this entire world, and he's even got a plan for you. If you're watching this and you don't feel like, you don't feel like you're part of the plan, you are, but it may not be in the way that you want. It may be, you may be on the outside looking in. I encourage you, don't wait another minute. Make today the day. Before that door is closed and you hear the words, I do not know you, depart from me. Come to Christ today. It is as easy as ABC. God, I know I'm a sinner. God, I know I've done wrong. God save me. The day I got saved, I'll never forget looking at that pastor and saying, my exact words were, Pastor, I'm going to hell and I don't want to. I believe at that very moment, God was just wrapping me up in his arms. I'm going to hell and I don't want to. If you've survived this 27 minutes and that's you, I beg you, just say, God, I'm yours. Leave a note. I'll message you back. I promise you, you are loved. Father God, I ask if you would, God, to be with each and every person, God, today. Be with them, God, as they watch this message, God. Be with them through their week. Lift them up. Strengthen them, God. If anyone's prayed to receive you, because of this, God, then you just grab hold of them, God. You lift them up, God. You remove the scales, God, and you show them, God, love like they've never known. God, we thank you and we praise you for everything in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, hey. Next week, same time, same place. If it ain't raining, same yard. And by the way, somebody asked me the other day if this was like a virtual background. Look, no blurring. I'm really standing in front of a pastor behind my house. Well, not standing. I'm sitting. Anyway, hey, love y'all. Have a great week. Bye.